Hello and welcome to my CPM S30V blade steel guide. Sit back, grab yourself a coffee, a cup of tea, whatever, and uh, you know, gain some knowledge about this blade, blade steel. Here in front of you are a selection of CPM S30V uh, knives. We've all got that steel. What is this steel? Well, it's a hardened, powder made, wear and corrosion resistant stainless steel. I've got a lot of Spydercos there because I've only got one other knife that has S30V and that's this Leatherman. There you go. So it's going to be quite Spyderco based this, this video. I've looked on Spyderco's website, they have about 37 knives currently that are not discontinued where they use the, the blade steel. They're quite expensive knives too. Blade steel is mainly used in higher end production and custom knives. The most expensive knife that they've got S30V on is actually the Rubicon running at about $500 or so, that's that's the MSRP. You're looking at higher end knives really that has S30V. The origins of, of the blade steel, uh, it was developed by Dick Barber of Crucible Industries in collaboration with the well-known knife maker Chris Reeve. Um, you may have well have heard of Chris Reeve, uh, he makes the, the Sebenzas and uh, he also helped form and create the, the integral lock or the the frame lock as we, as we now call it, which is here. And this Sage 2 was actually in commemoration of him bringing about this, this locking mechanism. The actual steel itself, it's a formation and even distribution of vanadium carbides. They're basically harder and more effective at cutting than chromium carbides, which you find in, in other steels. Why do knife companies use it? Well, what, one of the reasons is it's, is it is a high, high grade steel. So there's, there's that kind of factor of it, as well as its cutting performance, its edge retention, its um, toughness and its corrosion resistance. It's also easier to grind than some steels on belts. Grinding belts, they'll still wear down with S30, but it's, it's a bit easier. Its actual composition is it's 1.45% carbon, 14% chromium, 4% vanadium, which is the important factor in, in S30V. I'm assuming that's what the V stands for, obviously. And it's got 2% molybdenum. So it's considered a high, a premium grade knife steel. It's so expensive that the steel itself strongly affects a knife's price. A lot of the time, knife steel doesn't play that much of a factor in into it. It belongs in higher end production knives. So you've got here, this is the Spyderco Military. It's quite a legendary knife, really. Other than the pocket clip, which is only one way, it's a lightweight knife, it's an excellent worker, it's got a huge long blade on it. You've got it on the two paramilitaries here, they use S30V on, on them, and on the Sages, these two, the Sage 1 on the top with the carbon fibre, and with the Sage 2 here with the titanium scales. You've also got it on the real premium UK legal knife, the UK PK, You've got the S30V along with the, the titanium and obviously on the Rubicon with the, the titanium liners, the carbon fibre and the, the S30V steel and it's quite a big thick blade and I think S30V specifically lends itself very well to, to the shape of, of this knife and uh, its blade. I haven't got a native, my friend's got a native and he's got lots of th positive things to say about the native. S30V, it lends itself well to that blade shape too. There you go. Buck knives, they call it the absolute best steel available. That's another bit of insight. Moving on from this though, in 2009, because this steel has been around a, a, a fair while, in 2009 they came up with a, a, a minor update for S30V called S35VN and the N it was niobium which was the the addition and uh, hence the, the N there. This resulted in in a finer grain structure an even finer grain structure than S30V which meant that it had a slightly better increased toughness and ease of sharp. So you've got something that's a little bit tougher which is important with you know large blades if you've got transverse toughness that is. This is quite an in-depth blade steel information video i thought that this is quite a high-tech steel that i'd i'd go into some depth into it but anyway this uh, niobium it's created as a steel that is is better toughness and it's it's easier to sharpen but the edge retention is roughly the same all in all it is a minor up upgrade if you had a knife with s30v and s35 well I, i'd pick the s35 you do sometimes spyderco do make knives like the paramilitary 2 with s35 that's one to, to look out for as well now what also happened similar times is uh, Carpenter they brought out this uh, CTS XHP and also Austria Udenholm LMAX 
steel. So they're the two steels. They they use different processes, but they're also high-end steels too. Some people prefer the CTSX HP, some people prefer the LMAT. When you're talking about these high-end steels, you're really looking at the heat treatments that they use as well. Moving back to S30V, it has had mixed performance, and the reason for that is because there was a, a flood of uh, S30 um, knives and, and blade steels um, put into the mass market. Uh, they moved away from high-end and uh, um, custom and they moved into the mass market. That's one of the reasons why you, you've, you've seen some mixed performance because if the production, sometimes the tests and things that they do won't actually weed out some of the performance issues. But saying that, I've never had any problems with any of my S30V blades. People have, some people haven't either. I mean, S35, it's a very hard steel. I'll talk about that in a, in a little moment and it is prone to, to some chipping but that's the price you pay for trying to keep that edge longer. If you just work that into your, your thoughts that it's to do with the heat treatment and it's not the actual you know steel itself. Moving through to different blade steels though, I mentioned the price earlier that it directly affects the, the price of the knife and there are some upcoming blade steels, I say upcoming, VG10 has been around for a while but particular N690 C O is uh, is an upcoming steel that is I can get it almost as sharp as S30V yes it won't last as long but I know that it the, the edge will only roll and it won't uh, chip or, or break and it's it's easy to sharpen so if you're willing to put in a bit of time sharpening it then this might be a better cheaper alternative Likewise with VG10, for the price point, it's very, very difficult to, to beat that. You get to a point with steel sometimes where there, are, where there are diminishing returns, and this is almost at that point. So there are upcoming cheaper knife steels that are still high performance, high corrosion resistance and, and toughness and things that is almost at a similar performance level, albeit except for the, the edge retention. Crucible uh, materials, that they do go on to explain how... CPM S30V is treated and things. I'll just go into that. It's essentially martensitic stainless steel, which is designed to offer the best combination of toughness, wear resistance, and corrosion resistance. It's substantial improvement in toughness over other high hardness steels, such as 440C and D2, and its corrosion is equal or better than 440C in various environments. So it's kind of like a, a big upgrade to 440 and 154 cm. The process of making this steel essentially involves gas atomization of pre-alloyed molten steel to form powder. The powder is then screened and isostatically compressed to 100% dense compacts. So I hope I've still got you there. I hope you, you don't think you're watching an episode of Star Trek. It's essentially a, a very kind of complex process, but it guarantees that all of your elements are correctly aligned within that steel. CPM, which I haven't mentioned what it stands for yet, it actually stands for Crucible Particle Metallurgy. And basically, they produce steels with no alloy segregation and they're extremely uniform carbide distribution, which is characterized by superior dimensional stability, grindability, and toughness compared to steels produced by conventional processes. So that's basically a, a run-on to this gas atomization of pre-alloyed molten steel. It's This is what it gives you, this, this CPM. So moving on from that, the toughness of the steel is four times greater than 440C or 154CM. When we say toughness, we mean transverse toughness, which I would believe is that way, forgive me if I'm wrong, which makes it ideal for bigger blades because it's much more resistant to chipping and breaking. So just bear that in mind, very tough knives S30V. Its edge retention on the capture scale is 145%. And you compare that to 154, which is 120, and 440, which is 100. So it's it's got better edge retention than, than either of those two types of steel. It's corrosion resistance, finally, and, or it's average pitting potential, where they run volts through it and all the rest of it. I've worked it out, and it's essentially three times better resistance than 154, and over four times that of uh, 440. All in all, tougher, better edge retention, and its corrosion resistance is higher. So if you were in any doubt before this video as to um, there's a knife with 154 or oh, can I just settle with 440, S30V is, is, your, is your, your high point there. 
in terms of those three main points that people look for in buying knives. Uh, final thoughts. As I mentioned earlier, S30V has entered the, the mass market. Many believe that it, it shouldn't have. It should have just kept for high-end knives and custom knives only, um, such as like Sebenzas. And this is due to the heat treatment processes in trying to get that perfect steel. You can get a good result if it's done right. It is one of the best steels out there, hands down. Unfortunately though, as I mentioned earlier again, there are some other more affordable steels that are breaking through, offer a very similar performance and experience to, to S30V, but at a, at a cheaper price. And they're good for people that want to put the time in sharpening and um, maintaining their, their blades. And they're a, a great cheaper alternative and the everyday user won't really see much difference in, in um, usage. Uh, cutting performance to, to S30V. It's not completely leagues above, you know, VG10 and, and uh, N690, in my opinion. My personal opinion, I've got nothing po but positives to say about S30V. Uh, yeah, it can chip. I've had a couple of things chip slightly before, and it can be a bit of a pain to sharpen because it is it is tough and it is, it is a hardened stainless steel. But once you get past that, and you get a really fine edge on it, that edge is gonna, as long as you don't put it through the, the mill, that edge will last you a long long time and you you'll only need to touch it up on a on a strop or even on the the fine rods it is a high end steel so i wouldn't wouldn't rule out other steels in this category category like uh, XHP or LMAX and also if you can only afford something like N690 or VG10 they're going to be just as good for your tasks. I'm sure you, you wouldn't have any complaints either. S30V is um, one of those high performance, high end stainless steels that um, does live up to its name so long as the, the heat treatment and the process is used are good. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got gained some knowledge from it. Thanks ever so much for joining me. Next weekend, I'm going to either have a knife review, a new one, or I'm just going to put out my, my VG10 knife steel chart. I have had a couple of requests for other knife videos from people, so I've, I've taken them on board, and I'll try and make them soon as well. So thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thanks for watching. Take care.